Well, today we're here with Jeff Woods of Misty Pines Dog Park, and thanks for having us here today. My, my pleasure. Yeah, well, you're going to show us a little bit about dog training? Yep, I am. Uh, we're going to try to take, uh, you know, start from basically day one and how to develop a puppy through to get out uh, to the grouse woods or the pheasants woods and uh, talk about how to get them developed. So what's the first step? First step, uh, well, if you're getting a puppy, you want to make sure it comes from good bloodlines of what you want to do with that puppy. So if you get a puppy that's uh, the parents have hunted grouse, most likely you'll have good genes in that puppy and it will be easier to develop. Well, you know, I was looking around your facility here and you've got a lot of uh, neat things that we're going to do today. Yep, I'm, so I'm looking forward to it, Ralph. Let's get started. Okay. All right, uh, who have we got here? Yeah, let's... this is a Phantom. He, he's an eight-month-old pointer. Mm -hmm. And generally, uh, when we start working the puppies, uh, you know, once they get, uh, you know, some socialization and some puppy classes in with them and they're developing their social skills and they're playing with other puppies, we'll start uh, the puppies fairly early. In fact, you know, the, uh, if you get a, a puppy that's very young, even at eight to ten weeks old, you can start seeing the style of their point. Mm -hmm. uh, and what a puppy, a bird dog puppy does, they love to chase, that's that prey drive that you have in a puppy. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to teach the, the puppy is, <laughs> the only way to catch this bird is for you know, its master to come over. So what's nice about the wing and the pole, and this is only sight pointing, by the way, but mm -hmm. generally you can see this, this whoop, that's your wild bird flush. <laughs> so what we're trying to teach the puppy at this point is number one, I want to share this with the puppy, because most puppies you do this to, as soon as you touch them, they want to compete with you. Oh, okay. So don't forget the uh, good hunting dog has to share the wealth with you. It, it's, it's teamwork. Mm -hmm teamwork. So what the wing and the pull does, it helps me get to the dog so I can touch it so we can share the passion and the love of hunting in the point. Good job. Whoa. Then you can start applying little commands like whoa, because whoa is a, a very important command for the bird dogs. Uh, the whoa teaches the dog to stand and to hold still. Mm -hmm. Good job. So basically, you're breaking them from the idea that they can do it all by themselves, that they, they need you and they have that bond between Absolutely. the hunter and gun. And Absolutely. And and the puppy's very independent, as you know. They'll grab their toys. They'll, <laughs> they'll run around with it, try to catch me, catch me, catch me. <laughs> right. It's like kids. You know, they don't want to share right. their toys. Right. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to teach this puppy, and you have a bird dog. We spoke mm -hmm. earlier about your English setter and how he's uncanny and holding these birds down. Right. So what we're trying to teach the puppy, this bird sense, that as long as they don't move, mm -hmm. that bird won't move. So this is the, that's that bird sense. And as soon as he takes one step towards that bird, mm -hmm. I'm going to flush it. So what happens is the bird's dog starts realizing, I can't get to that bird. The only way I can get to that bird is when my master comes over, flushes that bird, and shoots it for him. Yeah, this is a grouse wing. I like to use the, you know, the bird, because this gives off some odor, so I like to use the bird wing that we're going to be hunting with. Mm -hmm. And I love to hunt grouse, as you do, so right. that's my favorite species to hunt. So uh, we save all our wings of the grouse we get annually, mm -hmm. and we just put them in the freezer, and periodically we'll just switch the wings. Yep, yeah. and just put a, a fishing rod on it. And that's an important issue, too, is retrieving. Mm -hmm. And you can start a puppy... Uh, you know, because when they're young, sometimes it's difficult because they're teething and they want to chew on everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but even as a puppy, you can start to retrieving qualities. And, and every dog has a certain amount of, of retrieving ability. Mostly puppies, they want to chase everything. So right. it's really actually a good start, time to start their retrieving. Okay. So if you get a little puppy, uh, the thing to do is just put a, a little leash on them or a long line. This is just a retrieving dummy with a grouse, yeah, yeah, with the the grouse wing. <laughs> taped yeah. on it, and I'm, I'm going to keep her on the line, because most puppies, when they grab something, they just want to parade with it. They don't want right. to share it with you. Right. They want to run over, <laughs> they want to run over the yard, right. they want you to chase them. Right. And that's what happens in the house. The kids are chasing the dog all over the place, right. and you get these puppies in here, and they're retrieving, mm -hmm. uh, is chase me, chase me, chase me. So you can start a young puppy on retrieving just by throwing it out, and let, let the dog go out and hold the cord. And when she picks it up, come on, girl. Good girl. Fetch it here. Oh, and then love them up. Good girl. Good girl. Then you can do a trade-off with them. Good girl. Take a little treat. Good girl. And you're teaching that, 
that puppy just to right. give it to you two hand. Good job, and your reward. So we call it trade-offs. Go fetch, go fetch. Good girl, oh, that's a good girl. Good girl, oh, ho, ho. good girl, good girl. This way, come on, hip, 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 come on, let's go, let's go, fetch it here, fetch it here, oh, ho, ho. good girl. All right, give. Very nice, thank you, good girl. She'd rather have the dummy <laughs> yeah. than the food. <laughs> I uh, those treats. <laughs> but that's a, a, it's a nice way of developing mm -hmm. a, a puppy on the retrieve. And probably the air I see if a lot of people are developing uh, the retrieves, they do it too often. So I mm -hmm. would end on a good note and just do two. Right. And I want my, you know, I want my master dog as, as a hunter uh, to retrieve to hand. Okay. So that's what I'm trying to develop. Okay. I want it to my hand. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if you've got multiple, multiple puppies, you, you want them mm -hmm. to see each other on point, because that's how they start backing and doing the honor system. Okay. Well, he's eating lunch and pointing at the same time. <laughs> Phantom. And that way they get to see each other. Because in the woods, when another dog sees another dog on point, Rob, you want to pull these bones away, please? Good job. Then you start developing to work together because lots of times right. when you're hunting with your buddy, you want your dog to respect and honor the other dog's point. Mm -hmm. and that, that's just good manners. So a very big part of training is obedience, getting your dog to listen to you and to your commands. How do we do that? Well, uh, it's, it's when you start a puppy uh, training, uh, you can start a puppy training as soon as you get it from... Uh, you know, day one, you can teach it little commands like sit and lie down, and uh, well, I'll show you on some of these on these dogs. But there again, you're you know, you're teaching your puppy from day one when you get it. Of course, you're worried about house training, but you want your puppy to listen to you. So when you start right. developing uh, puppies to listen to you, your puppy saying to you, "Yes, sir," or "Yes, ma'am," who it may right. be. So every time your puppy does something for you, you're developing your good leadership skills. Okay. Uh, and then the leadership skills are important to a dog because they are, are uh, descendants from the canine lupus and they're pack creatures, so they need to have leaders, teachers, mm -hmm. and trainers in their life. So raising a puppy of any breed or any dog is like raising kids. You, you are your dog's advisor and you are your dog's leader and you have to coach mm -hmm. them through life. A dog and puppy does not know good behavior versus bad behavior. They cannot define it. All mm -hmm. they know is behavior. So it's up right. to us to teach our children and to teach our puppies what's allowable and what's not allowable. Oh, that's a nifty collar. What's, uh, uh, yeah, what's it's, the... a, it's a nice, we call it a scruffy guider <clears throat> collar. We use a lot of the scruffy guider collar here mm -hmm. at Misty Pines. And what we have found with conventional choke collars and pinch collars from puppies Sometimes are Sometimes too tight. Too tight, it chokes the dog. What's nice okay. about this here, you can't hurt the dog with it. It's a limited slip. And you right. have a hand on it. Whoa. Right. So if you're teaching your dog, whoa, for instance, whoa, well, it has a little handle on it. Right. Then there again, when a dog does something correct, it's really important to reinforce. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Good girl. Whoa. So we'll just start on whoa here. Whoa means to stand still. And that pertains to when we get the dog out in the field on birds. Whoa. Good girl. Then we reinforce. Good girl. Whoa. Then we'll teach our dog with distraction. So, What's nice about a hat, it simulates like a flushing bird or uh, a flushing uh, moving quail or rabbit. So I want her to whoa here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Good girl, whoa. So when you train all dogs, <laughs> whoa, they have to work under a set of distractions. So when you start mm -hmm. adding distractions to the big picture. Right, because I mean, after all, the bird's there, but their hunters are moving in. You know, there's noise crashing through brush. So they have to kind of Focus cancel on. that out. And, Absolutely. And keep it up. Yeah. And, and that's a big problem with a lot of dogs. When the distraction mm -hmm. level starts getting greater, right. they tend to turn you off. Right. Good girl. Then we have a release command. So when you're working on woes or stay commands, it's really important to come into the dog to do your release. Mm -hmm. Good girl. All right, take a break. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Yes, that's a hat. That's a hat. You're going to retrieve it, or are you going to chew it up since you're a puppy? Uh, 
we'll, we'll, you can start developing your heel command. So healing is walking nice with a puppy. Uh, if, if probably the first thing that we teach young puppies is just how to follow you as the leader. So will you get a little piece of food out? This way, girl. This way. And this way is just a turning command. Mm -hmm. Good girl. This way, girl. You don't want her to be, you don't want a dog to be pulling you on the leash. This way, girl. This way. So you want to teach a dog how to respect you as the leader and want to be with you instead of dragging you all over the place. Good girl. Mm -hmm. So we teach a dog a lot, too, in our training center uh, to do various different obstacles, how to climb things. Quite, quite often when you're in the, the field with your dog, your dog needs to mm -hmm. maybe cross a stream over a log, uh, okay. jump over something. So we have You don't want them to be afraid of an object in front of them. Exactly. Just... Yeah. So we use certain words for certain obstacles, and we take those words, mm -hmm. and we need a dog, for instance, to crawl underneath a barbed wire fence if you're hunting out in a farmland. Right. Now, that's, that's so important, to crawl under a fence, or to hop right. up over a log, or to run through a quick. So right. we'll go through various uh, different obstacles with the dog just to teach it okay. confidence. You said you've been doing this 32 years? 32 years, yes okay. I have. Uh, and say the techniques you use today, how are they different from you know, 32 years ago? What's the major changes that you've you know, The major change is probably back then, 20, 30 years ago, I mean, dog training was more negative reinforcement. Okay. You know, uh, and today it's more of an understanding of building that relationship up with the dog mm -hmm. and not hurting the dog so much. Uh, you know, I always say a good dog trainer can use any tool mm -hmm. and they'll use it right because they have this gut feeling about the dog and how much pressure to apply. Right. You know, when you're training any animal, you can't use your emotions in training. You can't get angry. You have to have patience. Mm -hmm. This is Bandit. <laughs> Bandits is owned by Ed Gott of the Rough Grouse Society. And Bandit is a fully trained dog, great grouse dog. And it's all our concerns once the dog gets so trained. Mm -hmm. We have to get up condition right. annually. So. Well, especially during the off season when they, you know, a lot of guys don't keep their dogs in shape all summer long. And, yep, the kids you know, are feeding them goodies all the right, time. Right, right, yeah. Uh, but once a dog is trained to the treadmill, it's a wonderful tool right. to help keep the dog's condition. Okay, so after we've gone through some of the indoor basics, we're bringing the dog outside, and what's this pen behind you? Uh, we want to get the dog on birds. So I mean, you can start a young puppy on birds, eight, nine, uh, nine weeks old. You don't want to do it with because that's a fear period for puppies. So we always wait till the puppies maybe about four months old, then we'll introduce those. Uh, puppies to birds. Because yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to fly them in the air, and once you have a nice homer pigeon coop, then the birds fly back home. Mm -hmm. Easy. And these are wonderful because you can imitate a wild bird. That means is you you put your your pigeon in this rem remote here. And the pigeon's very comfortable. And you check out your wind direction. So you can throw some dust or you know, throw some leaves if you're not so sure. So we want the wind's coming up this way. So we'll put the put the pigeon maybe in a likely spot. Mm -hmm. There's birds like edges, so you know, find the edge or a grouse likes the grouse wood, so you pick a likely, likely spot where okay. that type of bird will maybe hide and mm -hmm. start eating, and, and you set it in there, okay? Okay. Now we're going to go back, and we'll get one of the puppies. And I'll put the puppy on the lead because it's really important, because you really want to lead the puppy into that bird, because if they get on the upwind side of it, they're never going to smell it, so they have to smell that way you have control. Right. And we're going to do the same thing as we did on the inside of the wing. We're going to lead the puppy in, and as soon as they smell that bird, uh, the young puppies might be very curious, and all we'll do is, is just flush the bird. And they'll go, oh my God, what happened? And you let the puppy smell the trap and the area, then you reset it up again. And usually the second or third time, they're much more careful. Okay. All right, so we'll take the young dog, and we want that enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. 
So <laughs> I don't mind them pulling me on this. I'm, I'm not going to worry about disciplining them. I want them okay. to be excited on their work. They're just young dogs. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to put any restraints on. It's, it's good to get a nice, thick, long line as I have here. And I got a little handle on this. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I can control the dog's range on this. And make sure you wear gloves because you don't want right, your rope burns. Yeah, yeah, you don't want rope burns. We know where that bird is. So, Rob, give me that remote, please. So, what we're going to do is we're going to try to lead the dog in, find that scent cone, observe the dog. As soon as they scent on it, then we're going to tell them to what? Uh, yeah, good job. Find the bird, find the bird, find the bird. Whoa. Good job. Whoa. Then we're going to do the same thing as we did. And you want to be quiet when you do this. It's, it's mesmerizing the bird. So you want to be real cautious. Whisper. Whoa. Good boy. Just shared a moment with the dog. Good boy. Try to make the dog more intense by grabbing a little stick or a stone. Watch what happens to the dog when I throw this. Oh, I better hurt, hold that bird down. A young puppy sometimes will charge in. If that's the case, and I'll flush the bird because with this remote, I got control of that bird, so I can I can imitate a wild bird very easily. have my associate Rob, he has a blank gun and he's used to the blank fire. So I'm going to have him walk in on the bird. Rob, you want to come in and walk into the sway it out in the side? He's going to be the hunter. Walk real slow, Rob. And I'm just going to control this dog a little bit. Try to share the moment with him. Stay right there, Rob. And he's already used to blank fire. So when the bird jumps up, I'll have him shoot the gun. Okay, Rob, you want to kick around a little bit, see if we can get that bird up? There he goes! Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job, Phantom. Good boy. You're a handsome boy. To get your dog on birds, I want you to do some work with your dogs and get them pointing. You can't make a bird dog unless you get them on birds. And they, and they need bird shot to them. So uh, getting to the shooting preserve like Four Seasons is the perfect ticket. Schedule a couple hunts, shoot some birds over your dog. Yeah. Well, thanks for showing us around and teaching us a few basics of uh, dog training. My pleasure, Ralph. Uh, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed it so much and seeing the, the happiness on people's face and mm -hmm. seeing that they were helping them produce a fine dog. Great. And for more about Misty Pines, uh, visit their website, mistypinesdogpark.com. And uh, maybe we'll see you again. Yep. Check us out. Yep. We'd love to have you again. It's been fun.